Hello, ladies and gentlemen. I am Dr. Claudia Albers, Planet X research and professional physicist. And today I'd like to bring to you another one of my articles. This one is entitled Planet X Entering Earth's Atmosphere, Creating Funnel-Shaped Clouds. Now, figure one below shows a long funnel-shaped cloud coming from a large cloud up, up there, you can see it's a large cloud, reaching down to the ground. You can see how long that is. Now, the cloud looks somewhat like what we would expect from a tornado cloud formation, but it has the width of a water spout formation. Clouds are made of tiny droplets of water, which has low gravitational potential and which has formed around the planet X system stellar cores and debris pieces. The clouds enter the atmosphere when the objects enter the atmosphere, accompanied by their debris fields. And you may look at Article 5 to 9 entitled Planet X Debris Fields and Water Clouds for more details. The stellar cores which come to Earth from the system are the cores of dead planets. The debris will contain pieces of rock from the planets. The clouds formed from the planet's water and is thus a part of the planet's debris field, which was left over when the planet died or exploded. And you may look at Article 513 entitled Planet X Planets or Exploded Planets. And here you can see that long funnel shaped cloud coming down towards the ground. Now, water in the form of clouds remains suspended in the atmosphere because of its low gravitational potential. And therefore, when part of the cloud moves down toward the surface, it means that the water in the cloud has gained enough gravitational potential to be pulled towards the ground by the Earth's gravitational attraction. Thus, the funnel-shaped cloud is actually a gravitational vortex, and it forms for the same reason that water moving down through a hole in a sink forms a vortex. The effect is due to gravitational diffraction. The amount of water is large compared with the size of the hole, and thus the hole acts as a source of gravitational field. In the case of a cloud vortex, the planet X system stellar core is the source of gravitational field, even if it is a very weak source due to its very low gravitational energy state. And this is illustrated here how if you just have a water droplet dropping down through a hole, you don't have any vortex or diffraction effects. But you have but when you have a large amount of water flowing through the hole, then the hole acts as a source of gravitational field and a vortex forms. And it forms on both sides of the hole. There's a, a vortex going in and there's a vortex going out. These funnels are the vortex coming out. And you may look at Article 380 entitled Gravitational Diffraction Gravity's a Wave. So what we have here is a vortex like the vortex on the bottom side of the hole. And that's uh, it's being pulled down towards the surface of the Earth by the Earth's gravity, but it's being pulled down from an object that is a source of gravitational field. So it's an actual object. Now, and this comes from a cloud that was observed in Brazil. It was rotating uh, slowly, but as you can see, it's a funnel-shaped cloud as well. It's just a lot wider than the one we saw in figure one. Now, the funnel-shaped cloud formation above is similar to what we saw in figure one, but it is much wider. It also did not touch the ground, suggesting that none of the water making up the cloud had enough gravitational potential to reach the surface, but that the water at the bottom of the vortex had the highest gravitational potential, and it was getting close to getting the same potential as the Earth's surface atmospheric material has. The widths of the vortex suggest that the object inside the cloud here um, is larger than the one in figure one, as a larger vortex would be associated with a larger hole or a larger source of gravitational field. 
So in uh, figure three, we see another one. It also comes from a Mr. MBB333 video. You can see his photograph there. And this is an even wider funnel shaped cloud. But like the others, it's also a water vortex in the Earth's atmosphere due to the presence of a Planet X system, Stellar in the Earth's atmosphere. In other words, this cloud is part of the cloud. Uh, it's the cloud that has formed around the Planet X system, Stellar itself. So it is part of that object. The above vortex or funnel-shaped cloud is even larger, suggesting that the planet X object, which will be spherical, at the top of the vortex is even larger. The cloud does not reach as close to the ground as the bottom of the vortex in figure 2. At least it doesn't seem to to me. And so it must, uh, the one in figure 2 must have, or at least the water that makes up the bottom of the cloud will have a a higher gravitational potential than the water that's at the bottom of this one. So this one, uh, if it's higher, it will have a lower gravitational potential, the water here at the bottom, which is in the form of tiny droplets. That's what a cloud is made of. Now, the one that we first saw in figure one uh, that was uh, had such a, a small width, a created a lot of damage. It gave rise to high winds. And this is because the vortex is very tight and rotates very fast. You would expect the same thing when we have a tight vortex going down into a hole in the sink. If the vortex is very tight, it rotates very fast. If it's very wide, it rotates slowly. Now, there will also be a low pressure system associated with each of these objects in the atmosphere due to their weak gravitational field and thus attract a force on the Earth's atmosphere around the object. The process by which the water in this cloud gains gravitational energy is through the exchange of electrons with the Earth's atmosphere. Atmospheric electrons are high in gravitational potential, which then transfers gravitational potential to the cloud around the object. The gravitational potential can then transfer to the object itself. As the object gains gravitational potential, it may eventually attract material from the Earth's surface, such as water, thus forming water spouts. Unless the object ever gains enough gravitational potential to form its own outer negative layer, it is not likely to leave the Earth's atmosphere. The water in the clouds around these objects are not likely to however reach the ground or fall as rain. As the object gains gravitational potential through the water cloud, its gravitational influence will increase and will cause the attractive force on the water cloud toward the planet X stellar core to increase, which will cause the funnel to move back up towards the surface of the object. It is only the water surrounding the debris pieces and debris dust, which will also be in the form of clouds that will fall to the ground as rain once the water clouds have absorbed enough gravitational energy through electron exchange with the Earth's atmosphere. The cloud is darkest where the water is denser and thus where the water droplets are likely to have reached a large size. This will happen as the cohesive forces between water molecules increases due to increasing gravitational energy in the water molecule particles. When clouds appear to be pink or colored or luminescent, this appears to be due to electrons giving off excess light as they settle in a planet X water molecule. In conclusion, funnel shaped clouds in the Earth's atmosphere are due to the presence of planet X system stellar cores inside the Earth's atmosphere. These water clouds made of small water droplets of low gravitational energy surround the objects and the material in their debris fields. And since the water was a part of these planets, the clouds are also a part of the planet X system stellar cores debris fields. And these are the references. This is Dr. Claudia Albers, Planet X physicist. Thank you for watching.